With me now is the Chief Communications Officer at the Jobs Creators Network, Elaine Parker. Welcome, Elaine. Thank you for having me. Good. So I know there's a lot going on in the news right now, but with all the election issues going on, we are learning that the unemployment rate fell by a full 1% in October. What is your reaction to that report? Well, I mean, my reaction is prior to COVID, we had um, incredible prosperity, the lowest unemployment um, we'd had in half a century. Every demographic across the board was experiencing prosperity and low unemployment. Um, the, the pandemic was a black swan event, but the policies that were in place that provided that economy to our small businesses, to Americans in general, those policies were still there. And as we have opened up states, we have seen these policies take effect and people are getting back to work. You're talking about 11.9 million jobs coming back in six months. I mean, that is unprecedented to see that kind of, of, uh, of growth in such a short time. And you look at the GDP that was announced uh, last week as well. It's just, it's incredible that we have rebounded this fast. That doesn't happen because you have high taxes and excessive regulation. That happens because you have low taxes and low regulations. And that's thanks to the Trump administration. Do you fear that if Biden were to be declared officially the winner of this election we find ourselves in right now, that a lot of these economic gains that we're seeing could be reversed? We know that Biden has uh, he signaled a support for more lockdowns, for example, this coming winter after he's inaugurated in January, if it does come to that. Do you fear what he could do to the economy? Look, a, a lockdown would be devastating to this economy. Our small business owners um, you know, two out of five are probably never going to open up again as a result of these lockdowns. Um, and there's 30 million small business owners in this country. They employ 60 million people. They were on the front end of this pandemic. And to do any other lockdowns in the future uh, would be catastrophic for our economy. Um, but as far as his economic plans, uh, you know, it, it, it's simply going to be death by a thousand cuts. This is someone who has promised to raise taxes when he gets into office and just coming off this pandemic and all the lockdowns, um, you know, we're, we're on a great path. To raise taxes on job creators would be catastrophic for our job creators. Yeah, we've seen Joe Biden, he says, you know, day one that he would like to get rid of President Trump's tax cuts. Uh, we've seen all sorts of issues such as that. He wants to get rid of uh, right to work protections as well. We know he wants to ramp up government spending by trillions and trillions of dollars. That is very scary stuff for the economy. We, we know when he was in the White House the last time with Obama as president, they oversaw some of the slowest economic recovery since the Great Depression. And I fear that that would happen again under a Biden presidency. So what we have seen in six months, what we just talked about, the GDP at 33 uh, percent uh, coming back last week, 11.9 million jobs in six months and dropping our unemployment rate from almost 15% to under, um, under 7% is pretty incredible. Dropping a full point is pretty incredible. It took four years for that kind of growth to happen under the Obama-Biden administration. Four years of stagnant wage growth, four years of waiting for the economy to come back, four years of getting people back to work. Um, and even then, it was still slow growth and wages didn't grow. Under this administration and these policies, the biggest problem that job creators had um, uh, uh, prior to the pandemic was we didn't have enough people to fill the jobs. There were a million more jobs than people available to fill them. We didn't have that problem under the Obama-Biden administration. And we also saw that the economy was a big reason why the president on Tuesday night on election, I love the exit polling was showing the president grabbed a lot of minority votes. I love Republicans typically don't get and especially when it comes to the Hispanic vote. If you could speak a little to that. Yeah, so this president has really reached out to the Hispanic community uh, in a huge way. Um, we did see his his uh, support amongst Hispanics overall increased by about three points over 2016. Um, in Florida, he split the vote with uh, with Vice President Biden. And in Texas, he took 40 percent of the vote. And just to give you an idea of how much he increased his support in the state of Texas, in the Rio Grande Valley, in some counties, he um, won those counties uh, by about five points, whereas in 2016, Hillary Clinton won them by 30 points. And that's because the Hispanic community has really benefited under these policies. They're more than twice as likely to start um, businesses than any other ethnicity. 
And because of that, they've seen wage increases, they've seen job growth, whether it's home ownership or entrepreneurship, Hispanics have really benefited under this administration. And they understand that these policies have, have helped them and they, they obviously voted to keep them in place. We also have seen a lot of political analysts over these past couple of days. They've kind of hypothesized that President Trump was able to cut into uh, the Democrats' stronghold when it comes to Hispanic voters by really driving home the message that Biden would be a Trojan horse for socialism, for far-left uh, policies such as that, and then especially would concern a lot of Cuban immigrants and their children. Uh, same thing for Venezuelans. So speak a little bit to that about the socialism aspect. Absolutely. I mean, we have a lot of um, small business owner members who are in South Florida. Many of them came from Cuba or Venezuela, Nicaragua, and they absolutely understand that the more the government takes over with promises to take care of people from cradle to grave, the less freedom we have. And many of these people came here from these countries because they wanted to escape those kinds of policies. They wanted to, to escape and have more freedom to create their own way of life. And many of them have their own small businesses that they run now. And they understand that having the government encroach into those businesses and take more of their hard-earned money prevents them from having prosperity and growing jobs and giving back to their communities, which is what they want to do. There is just so much at stake right now, especially concerning the economy. And right now we find ourselves in some strange election limbo, and I hope it does get resolved quickly here. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, Elaine. Thanks for having me.